Okay, so now let's uh, focus on doing our comments page. Um, so from our, our dashboard, we've got the redirect or the uh, navigation done to the comments and we're passing the post parameter over to it. Uh, so now we're gonna set up that comments page. Now this comments page um, is going to be the comments page that we will use for any post. So not, not just the authenticated user, it'll be for all comments for, for all posts. Um, so we want to set this. Um, I want to set this page up to be dynamic, to be able to receive information from from any post, and that way we're not creating multiple duplicate cop or duplicate comment pages um, for each each area of the app that has posts. We just want to do one page, keep the uh, keep the app as small as possible. So the very first thing that we want to do. Um, this is, uh, I, I believe I set this up in the, earlier on in this tutorial. Um, so this is just kind of a, a little bit of a template that uh, uh, Flutterflow already has. Um, so this back button should already be going back. Yeah, so it's already set to navigate back. So that's what you want. That way it's dynamic um, so that wherever you tap on comments throughout the app, when you click back, it'll take you back to the page that you originated from. Um, so first thing, we want to grab the parameter that we're passing in. So we're going to do a backend query at the uh, top level of the page, which would be the scaffold. And it, you know, up here it says post comments. So it's it's the page in its entirety. Um, and you can see up here the page parameter that's being passed in is the post reference, but we want to actually uh, capture that as a backend query so that we can use the information from it for the comments. So we will do a document reference or document from reference, um, which will be uh, posts, and then we'll use that page parameter. All right. So now that now that we're capturing the information in that post, we can start to add things in here. Um, so unlike on the dashboard where we had set this information as the authenticated user because all that the authenticated user is seeing on this page is their own posts. Uh, on the comments, we actually want that to be dynamically set because it may not always be the authenticated user that you're viewing. Um, so if I were to try and go in here and set the username to the person that created the post just by doing it this way, I'd go to post documents. You can scroll through here and you can see that you've got the posted by reference, but that all it does is gives you document ID. It does not actually give you like the user's screen name or their picture, just the ID. So we actually need to do another query on top of the page query. Um, so I find the easiest way to do that is just to go ahead and go to the row that uh, encompasses, encapsulates the name and the, the picture and do another query, do document from reference, select users, and then the post document that we're looking at, you'll select posted by reference here. Now we're querying information about the user that post made this post. So now we can plug their name in here. So you see now we've got the user and you can see the box is highlighted when I'm hovering over it. And now we can put their username in here. Same thing with the picture. Okay, so now we've captured who actually made that post. And if this is the authenticated user, um, it'll show that and show their own information as well. And then for the, the date of the post, then we want to go to the post document. We want to do the date created and we want to do um, relative as we did before. And then of course here we'll drop that in post document. We'll do the content uh, photo. Do photo. And you can see I don't have a video in here. So that's something we want to we want to plug in. So you just grab the video and 
it's already set to six, so we'll do this at six. And you grab video uh, from the post document. Okay, so it's set up just like we did on the dashboard. Uh, and then you'd want to set your conditional values just like what we did on the dashboard as well. Um, and I, since you've already seen me do this, I'm not going to repeat it. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in real quick. Okay, so I went ahead and took care of that. So the conditions are set up here. And I'm going to hide video. So it's all nice and even down through here. Okay, um, and then I also dropped a, a secondary icon in here, but we need to go ahead and, and work that out. So uh, as noted uh, on the dashboard, all I had was just the already liked icon, but now we need to set it up so that um, a user can like the icon, or I'm sorry, like the post from, from within the comments section. So little extra things that we need to do here. First of all, let's go ahead and just set the likes uh, post document would be likes and number format would be compact and that doesn't need to be set so that's taken care of okay so um, there are probably a number of ways to achieve this but I have found that this is the easiest way to allow a user to like a post change the icon from unfilled to filled using conditional visibility and also prevent the user from liking one post multiple times um, because uh, if you have it where if you do an action on that uh, to update uh, update the document likes which you do increment Okay, so if you had it set up just like that, uh, first of all, um, making this conditionally invisible upon tap uh, is a little bit more challenging to do um, and doesn't really make sense in my opinion. I've tried a lot of different methods and the method I'm going to show you just really kind of makes the most sense in my mind. It, it works flawlessly. Um, but in addition to that, a user could tap this button over and over and over and over again and add a thousand likes to a person's post. Um, so we want to limit them to being able to only like a post once um, or dislike a post once. So we don't want to do it this way. Okay. Um, which I guess I could have left that in there, but we'll just start from scratch here. So, so we're going to start with this button first. And we'll go back and do that action of updating the post. And we will set the likes to increment by one. We do want it to do that. But we also want to grab the liked by users reference. And we want to add the user that's liking this post to that list. So you'd add the set and then you'd go to authenticated user and grab their reference. And then I'll add them to that list. Um, instead of building this out by scratch all, uh, all over again, you can just copy that action, go over here to the, the filled icon, paste that action, and then just change it from increment to decrement by one. And then change from add to set to remove from set. Okay, and now we can set our conditional visibility. So uh, on this first one, let's go ahead and do conditional visibility. Um, and we want to go to the post document here, liked by users, <clears throat> list contains item, authenticated user. But we want to set that to the to an opposite statement. So we only want this icon to show up, this unfilled like icon, if the authenticated user is not in the liked by list. Oops. So set that to opposite statement and confirm. And then go back to it and copy variable. Um, make sure that when you create the first variable, you confirm it before you copy it. Otherwise, if you copy it, 
it'll disappear and then it won't be there. So you've got to confirm it and save it and then, then copy that variable. Now we can go over to the field icon and plug in conditional variable and paste the variable that we just created, but leave this switch turned off. So if the liked by users list does contain the authenticated user, then the field icon will show up. Okay, so that, that again, that's the best way I've found to uh, liking a post. Pretty straightforward. Okay, um, and then comments, we want to plug that in. So we go to the post document and we do the comments reference. Oops, comments reference, and that's number of items, number format. There we go. Um, you know what? Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, okay. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to back up here on how I want to express the number of comments for a post because the what I had originally thought about doing for posts and comments, I, I actually changed my mind on what I was wanting to do. Um, goodness, okay, let me explain kind of a little bit. So let's leave that the way it is right now. Let me go ahead and build my comment widget and finish out all of this so that I'm not jumping around. And then once we get to where I actually create the post and comment box, I will explain why querying the number of comments like the way I have done it, like this, will not work. Um, and then I'll, I'll show you a different way of doing it that will actually work better um, for what we're trying to do here. So let's go ahead and finish out here with, we want to... Uh, We want to do a query of comments for this post. So we're, we've already got a list view in here. So let's go ahead and do a backend query. Um, we're going to query a collection and we'll query comments and we'll do list of documents. And uh, I'm going to set a limit on that as well. All right, um, and then we want to um, post reference for the comments is equal to the post that we're working with. Post document reference. Okay. And then order by um, due date created is decreasing. We'll show the newest comment at the top. All right, um, so that'll work like that. And then we need to do something similar like what we did up here where we queried the user. And we'll just grab the entire row to encapsulate the entire thing. And uh, I'm sorry, query in there apparently. Do a backend query. We'll do a document from reference, and then users. And now we got our comments document. And so we'll reference the, uh, let's see here created by reference. So the person that created this comment is who we want to get out of that. Now we can plug their picture in, in the user's document, and we can plug their uh, display name. All right, and then we'll plug in the content of the actual comment itself and the date. Okay. <clears throat> now uh, you can see that width and height are both set to empty. Um, that way the comment box can exp expand horizontally as well as vertically depending on how much content is inside the box. And the expansion uh, horizontally will stop at the uh, perimeter of this row. Um, so it won't go any further than where where that row stops, um, but it will it will expand vertically um, as far as it needs to, or if you have a limitation on how much text they can put into a comment. 
All right, uh, so we got that all that taken care of here. Um, so let's go ahead and do a floating action button for them to add in a comment. Uh, and I'm gonna just change that color a little bit. Uh, and then we're gonna drop an icon inside the floating action button. And we'll change that to white. And we'll do uh, like an add button. So they know they can post a comment there. All right, so for actually posting comments, uh, that you know you can you can make this any way you want it to. Really, uh, you can do a whole separate page. You can do a, a bottom sheet. Um, you could actually have like the comment box down here at the bottom. That's just a part of this page. But for what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do a float or a, a, a bottom sheet. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go over to my components and I'm going to create a component. I'm going to do a bottom sheet, and I'm just going to um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to grab this one and edit it. Um, and title it post comment. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this column because I don't need it. But before I go any further, I'm going to go back. Um, I do want to pass a parameter from this button, so I'm going to go to the floating action button and do an action. I'm scroll down here to uh, bottom sheet and show. And I'm going to show the post comment. Um, before I go on, I'm going to make it non-dismissible. That way they can't dismiss it by tapping outside of the, the bottom sheet or by sliding it down. The only way they will be able to dismiss it is either by posting a comment or pressing a cancel button. Um, that way, if they're in the middle of writing a comment, they don't accidentally dismiss the bottom sheet and lose their comment. Um, and then I'm going to set the height of how high up this bottom sheet will rise. Uh, let's do 20% for now and we'll check it out later and see if that looks good. Uh, and so let's go ahead and pass a parameter to that bottom sheet and it's going to be the post reference that we want to pass. So document reference, posts, confirm, and then pass. And we're post, we're passing the post reference, but I'm actually going to pass it from here. And the reason I did that is I've actually found sometimes, I don't know what the issue is. Uh, I don't know if it's a flutter flow issue or, or what, but if I try and pass a page parameter, to another page or to a bottom sheet, it won't always work. Sometimes it does work, but sometimes it'll throw an error and it won't pass the correct information. Um, if if I am querying that page parameter into a page. Now, if I was not querying post document from my page parameter into this page, then I could pass from here and it wouldn't be a problem. But since I am querying it and I try and pass from there, it, seems to have issues sometimes, so I'm actually going to pass from the query. All right, so that's taken care of. So we can go back to our uh, post comment uh, bottom sheet here. So the um, very first thing that I want to do here before I move on is I want to set the container to, um, well, you know what, I don't need to, yeah, I don't need to do a back-end query on this. Um, I'll just use the post reference uh, to connect it to the comments. So there's really nothing I need to do there. Um, so instead, I'm going to make this container go over here. And I'm actually going to make it um, transparent. And then uh, I'm going to throw a column in there and I'm going to center it and then I'm going to I'm going to go in here and use a pre-made widget for the comment box let's see which one do I want to use here mm -hmm. there it is Okay, so I'm going to use that. Um, 
Now, uh, I am going to have a limitation on how much text I can put in here as far as max lines goes. Um, so my my container that's holding my transparent container that's holding this comment does not need to have dynamic height because it's it's not going to expand any more than what I have the text field set to. However, I do want to make it smaller. Oof. A little laggy. It's lagging a little bit on me here. Well, maybe that'll work. Okay, that will work. Um, and then I want to, let's grab the outer container of the comment, not the, not that one, for the comment box itself, this one. And let's put some padding between the bottom of this comment box and the bottom of my container here. <clears throat> I'm gonna do 24. And it looks like I'm gonna have to refresh again. All right, so that looks, that looks pretty good. Um, and I can just close that up, maybe. Yeah, let me go ahead and do a refresh since we're, we've gotten really slow. Alrighty. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and set this to the authenticated user. Uh, their photo URL. And we will leave the max lines at three. That'll be fine. Um, we're not going to use any of this in the comments for this. Uh, I'm not going to let them upload pictures or anything to comments. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that row entirely. But then I'm going to set this row for the button to put the button all the way over to the right. And of course, we do need a cancel button because I have it so that the bottom sheet is non-dismissible. Okay, that'll work. Um, all right, so let's go ahead, let's set cancel first, and that'll just be a dismissal for the bottom sheet. And then let's set the post comment action. Now let's go up here. All right, so we'll create a document. Um, obviously it's a comment, and we need to go ahead and drop in bunch of these fields, not all of them, but we'll go ahead and put them all in here for now. Okay. And comment ID is going to be just a, a random data string. So you go down here to uh, random data. Goodness. And we'll get random string and I'm just going to like set it at 16 and 16. So it'll be 16 characters long and I'll do uppercase and digits. And then date created will be under global, current time. The content will be from the text field that's already in there. So widget state, write something. Don't need likes, get rid of that. Get rid of liked by users. Uh, post reference will be from that parameter we passed in right here. And uh, <clears throat> since this comment page is going to be um, going to be uh, passed to from various places throughout the app. We want to go ahead and set these fields here, even though we're not using them. Um, well, no, we can't do that. That's right. I'm not passing any group group parameters to this page. So we'll actually have to come back to the comments page once we get groups and things like that set up. So for now, we'll just get rid of them uh, and we'll come back to them later. And then created by will be authenticated user. Okay. 
So that's set up. So now it's creating a comment and it's referencing that post. Um, but as previously noted, oops, that's where I did a reset, not dashboard. Um, I had this set to where the reference number of comments tied to this to this post. And the issue is, is that when I do this, I do an update, update document, and I'm going to update the post document, obviously. Um, and then if I go to the, the reference for comments, so comments reference, that's what that number is pulling from, Oops. pulling from the comments reference. If I try and add the set, you'll see that I cannot add the comment that I'm creating to the set because you can't do that. You can't create a document and then add it to another document in the same action. Um, just doesn't work that way. I kind of wish it did, but it doesn't for some reason. Uh, so when you created this comment, since we can't add it to the set of referenced comments, then this number won't update anytime a new comment is added because it's not, it's not getting any data. So instead of doing it this way, we're actually just going to get rid of that entirely. We're going to go over here. And we're going to treat comments like we treat likes. So we want to go to posts. And we're just going to say comments. And we're going to put those in as an integer. And then we will go over here, post comment. And instead of doing a comment reference, we're actually going to do comments, increment, increment by one. And now we will get the current number of comments for a post. So we've created a comment, we've updated the post to show that comment, add another action to dismiss the uh, bottom sheet. And you could do a snack bar confirming that they've, they've added it, that they've posted a comment if you wanted to, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that for this. Um, and then once we get into notifications, stuff like that, we'll, we'll come back here. But, all right, so that's how you add a comment. And then of course we want this to reference correctly here. So we go into posts and we actually grab number of comments instead of comments reference. Number and compact, set that to zero. Okay, so that's, um, that's how we, we set up comments and everything. Uh, all right, I think that's it for this tutorial as far as comments and such go. So uh, we'll look at some other stuff in the next tutorial.